back to another vlog. I am back in our apartment, as you can see. Um, it's Sunday, we're just sort of like settling in to the week. I just did my timetable for the week. Blue is writing, purple is uni. Um, and I'm, yeah, like feeling rejuvenated after I took last week off of uni like off my own accord obviously just to process what had happened I don't think I actually said in the last one but my grandma did pass away so that was um or is really hard um but we ended up coming back to Amsterdam just because it's um gonna be a while like a few weeks until the funeral because of lots of delays covid etc etc so yeah we decided to come back and then regroup and probably we'll end up going back to london for like a longer christmas period that will include the funeral so anyway that's those life updates we're back in amsterdam i'm actually really happy to come back i was super homesick before we left and me and tom had lots of chats while we were I'm back home with my mum, sort of being like, was this the right decision? Like, do we actually like our life abroad? Like, I think there's a very, particularly post-Brexit, like there's this idea that like moving to Europe is like the best thing you can do, like as a young British couple, or, like as a young British single person, and like you get access to, to the mainland Europe. And like, I don't know, like I feel like there's a lot of rose tinted glasses that come with people moving abroad um so i guess i would just like to say to everyone that's actually fucking hard because at the end of the day you can't uproot your entire community and bring them with you so it's really lonely i think and i think it's really hard to make connections in adult life it's hard to make connections in a new city that's in a like a second language a second culture um particularly here I feel like Amsterdam has a very specific expat community that maybe Tom and I don't fit into like we're not corporate workers we're not or I'm not a teacher anymore like there's a very I think um archetype expat that we are not um so yeah and to be honest it's probably on us as well like within the pandemic with me being ill like we haven't really made an effort to meet new people and stuff so yeah I guess we were talking a lot while we were home but actually now we're back um I'm like glad to be back like I love our apartment so much I felt like home when I walked in the door and like that all felt really good so yeah I mean we've hardly been we've been living abroad since August and this was the last time this was the first time we went back to England so you know obviously all these feelings come up and stuff but I would hate for people to think that like moving abroad is like the be all and end all of like your 20s or whatever it's like obviously we're so grateful we're so privileged that we're in the position with Tom's work etc etc to live abroad and um the fact that I'm homesick really is neither here nor there because Tom will we will be here for the next two years because of Tom's PhD um and what we do after that we're not sure but like there's no point wishing away the time that we have here because we know we're here um and if I was to go home it would be like us to return to long distance which is not something that we feel like it's the right thing to do so yeah I thought I would just like put that in the start of the video because I often get messages and comments being like oh my god your life like so cool so great that you live abroad like amazing kind of thing um but I just wanted to tell anyone who's watching who thinks that it's um like all rainbows and sunshine that it's not <laughs> it's fucking hard on top of all the other things that we've what I've been through this year with my health and everything it's just like you know it's a lot it's a lot this year's been a lot so I'm trying to dial back on like expending my energy on stuff I have a full-on addiction to Instagram and Twitter that I need to kick and I just don't know what to do about it like I've set the timers I've deleted the apps and I think it's really hard and I think I want to do some writing on it because I find particularly Instagram a really most of the time, like a place that I connect with other sick people, particularly when I'm feeling lonely, particularly when I don't have like an IRL community here that I like have so many internet friends that I talk to on there and just like even seeing my friends post memes about like being in pain, I'm like, oh, classic. And I feel better about my own situation. So it's really hard. And I think there's a lot of um, conversations around the dangers of social media that don't take into account like the crip. Um, lens and like the disability lens of people using it to build community that they don't have in real life so 
I've been thinking about that a lot, but also I know I waste a lot. Not even It's not even wasting time, it's just like it sucks my energy. Um, so I'm trying to not do that, but it's really hard, <laughs> which is like fucking lame to be like, oh my God, I'm addicted to my phone, but like I am and I need to stop. Um, so that's sort of a, not on my to-do list, but it's something I'm really trying to work on. Um, and as well as like just really focus my energy on fucking finishing my book proposal and finding a literary agent, which is really scary to say. And I know um, I have so much support from you guys. Anytime I post a piece of writing, people are like, oh my God, can't wait to read your book. Like I know the book you write will be amazing. And that is like so heartwarming and like nice to hear. And I, I do believe in my writing and I do believe that I have something to say that is interesting and unique. And I had a really good like um, phone call at meeting with um, another writing friend and chatting about a project that we want to do but also just like she gave me so much hope about they were just saying like oh it doesn't matter if someone else is writing the book that, that you think someone else is writing the same book as you like everyone is bringing something really unique to the table whether that's through disability through age through location whatever it is like there's not a it, it's really hard I think capitalism and neoliberalism really breeds a scarcity mindset in all of us particularly I think in women other people like you you believe that there's like only room for one of you to do one of those things it's like oh if they're writing a book about that then i you know i should just give up and i think there is space for everyone to do those things particularly if you're coming from a position that is previously underrepresented in writing publishing whatever it is that you're talking about so yeah i'm putting that out to the universe i'm gonna get my book proposal done by the end of the year so that's what we're working on this week. I've like carved out time and writer's hours to do that. I've got a really exciting pitch I'm working on for a personal essay about pain. And I have an article to write. I got commissioned for Mashable on the sex eyes of people with endometriosis. Rock on, baby. Hope my mum and my boyfriend's parents don't read those because I'm being going to start writing more about sex. So interesting. Anyway, this is a very long rambly intro to the video, not going out today. Don't know how much will go out this week, to be honest. It's really unsettled in the city. Um, lots of anti-vaxxers, lots of civil unrest, as they call it. Um, so yeah, keeping ourselves to ourselves. Got a food shop coming. We'll give you a haul of the bits I got back from the UK. And keep your updated with what I'm reading, continuing the last week of non-fiction November. So I'll see you guys in a bit. We have a COVID scare in the house, which is not the way I plan on starting my super productive getting back to life week. Um, Tom doesn't feel well, got negative lat flow, but we're waiting to do a PCR. Obviously I'm extremely stressed, anxious, nervous, trying to just like focus on uni. You guys know our apartment is like one massive long room, so we're doing the best we can, but yeah, I'm not hopeful, but anyway, I slept on the sofa last night, obviously, um, and I just finished some uni work this morning, so I'm about to settle down with a new book, and I'm going to start Your Body Keeps, My Body Keeps Your Secrets on Shame and Reclamation by Lucia Osborne Crowley, which I'm super excited to read. It's like one of those ones I've been putting off because I know it's going to be a lot about illness but right now I feel like I'll find that comforting instead of distressing um at university this week um in my social justice um 
seminar we're doing disability justice so um that's like heavy to like read about and learn about obviously I know a lot or like I feel like I know a bit about it and obviously have lived experience but it's just like depressing like we have this forum where people can like post our lecturer like who is also disabled um asked us to like post disabled creative work and like I could literally not count on my hands the number of times people use the word inspiring and I was just like Argh! I ate it here but anyway yeah just trying to get keep on top of uni this week catch up on what I miss kind of thing and stay away from the sick man but yeah I'll update you by the time you watch this video you will have known what has happened anyway but gonna start reading snacking on some smoked almonds and got the duvet on the sofa floating by and the music playing what are they doing with those purple flags it's me coming at you from the kitchen as always i'm so grateful for past me assuming that wow that's not a good head look um <laughs> assuming that i wouldn't feel well this week when in fact Tom is the one not feeling well, which means I'm left to cook in, which, as you know, is not my category of activity. Woo! My heart is pounding. Thanks, bots. Um, because that's my energy. But I just picked up the food haul from the delivery guy downstairs. And I was, like, reviewing the menu, and I was like, yes, I planned easy things. So tonight we're having stir fry noodles found these in the freezer spicy bao buns although i don't own any of the equipment required to cook them which is either a microwave no a steaming like bamboo thing no or a colander that you can put over a pot which my colander is plastic so that's obviously not gonna work um in terms of food shopping did i get anything interesting show you it was freaking heavy that's for sure but like i mostly got um a wok mix this is like my ultimate too ill to cook meal instant noodles pre-chopped veg i try and get some kind of protein so i'm gonna put chickpeas in it don't at me people who cook a lot of asian food okay can't have tempeh, can't have tofu at the moment, can't have seitan at the moment. All of it is making me vomit. Love that. So chickpeas it is. To get some protein in, if Tom was cooking, he'd like make himself chicken nuggets and stuff, but we don't have that. What else did I get? Regular veg. There's two for one on laundry products. Got that. They're not really up with the bulk food thing here because in Brighton we used to get all of our like cleaning products in bulk like we'd go for refill stuff but have yet to find somewhere convenient and well priced to do that amsterdamers don't come at me i know there are places you can do it i just don't think it's that well priced and it's not near where we live so then we're not going to do it like re realistically you're not going to do it like once every two weeks if it's like a 40 minute cycle away are you so anyway stocked up on some products Stocked up on the caramel cups from Deliciously Ella. And then I got the hazelnut bites, which are my favourite. I got two of these, but I gave one to my brother. Weird, nice. Must be that sisterly affection that grief is bringing out on me that I don't normally have for him. Um, but I got the chocolate, because chocolate orange is favourite, that's why I gave it to him. The Rhythm 108, like, special edition chocolate bar. And then we demolished this yesterday, but Vegan Friends hit up the new Cadbury's. Not the plain one. Haven't heard great reviews about that, but the plant bar salted caramel, it rocks guys, it rocks. I am going to cook some dinner, unpack the shopping, and then I will, I actually have class this evening, so I need to get my butt. I need to hurry up basically, because I have a method, research method of class in like 45 minutes. So let's make a stir fry and see you later. Because when I first started the vlog, I was like, but then you get into 
It's Tuesday and we're making soup. Red pepper, white bean and sweet potato. I'm just gonna roast in my veg in the oven and then do it on the stove with a stick blender. And that will be lunch for the next few days, which is handy because I am tired. Um, Tom's PCR came back negative, which is good, but we're still keeping up precautions because he doesn't feel well, um, but we think it's like a different bug, like flu or just a bad cold. So that's good. I'm still like anxious. <laughs> Did you hear him in the background saying pray for him? Um, I'm still anxious and just don't feel well myself. Normal illness bullshit. Anyway, let's make some soup. Hello, I'm done with class for the day. Made my soup, which you saw, which was delicious. I think I showed you all of the spices, but I ended up adding in some cashew nuts and then blending it with a stick blender. And it was so yummy. Forgot how much I love soup. But I came on here to recommend you a book that I'm reading for university, but I feel like lots of you will find interesting. It's called Ableism in Academia. It's free as an ebook from UCL Press and it has personal essays. Don't be put off by the title because um, the essays are really wide ranging. They're really easy to read so far. Like it's not an academic text by any means. Like it's a lot of infused with personal experience. There was a really good essay on invisible illness and like the pressure to keep up in workplaces, which I really enjoyed. Um, and yeah, I'm just dipping in and out of it for uni and I thought I would tell you about it. I'm also wearing that shirt I got at the, um, at the IJ in my last vlog and it's so comfy. I feel like it's going to be one of those ones I'm just going to wear loads. And I feel like it looks like toast, but it was only 10 euros. As for now, I'm going to take a nap. I'm fucking exhausted. Um, I tried a lecture on disability and my lecturer, who is also disabled, was talking about, like, the idea of, like, being disabled and, like, the social model in different environments. And I was just, like, thinking, which is quite a depressing thought, like, I never don't feel disabled because I never don't feel wet I never don't feel unwell she was like talking about how giving an online lecture she feels less she's less disabled by giving an online lecture than she is when she has to give a lecture in person because obviously all of like the physical barriers that come to commuting standing up straight like talking to people interacting versus online and I was like yeah that's true and then I was like thinking about are there any moments in my day where I don't feel disabled? And I was like, no, because even when I'm lying down, I'm like in pain. Like I'm never not reminded of how unwell I am. And I think that's what's pissing me off a lot recently. It's just like, I cannot seem to catch a break. Or like I said to Tom this morning when I was getting changed, I felt so tired. I was like, imagine, I don't know what it feels like to wake up and feel well or not even well but just like not aware of my physical body like as soon as I wake up I'm like okay this doesn't feel right this doesn't feel like going through a checklist um I don't know that's just my bodily frustrations this week should probably channel it into a piece of writing instead of ranting to YouTube but here we are gonna rest watch Gilmore Girls and get back to you when I read some more of my book bye Good morning friends, I am just editing a video that you would have already seen. I ended up having to split it into two parts. Um, it's everything I know about cults, which I know has been hugely requested and I promised it for ages, but I honestly just put off filming it because I knew the edit was going to be horrible because it's got like 30 book recommendations in it. Um, but I need to 
finished that edit this morning and then I don't actually have any uni work to do today, which is good. I was just prepping some ideas for Vlogmas. Like the traditional Vlogmas is that you vlog and upload every day, which is just not realistic in my crypt disabled life. So I think I'm just gonna do like more sporadic vlogs, um, maybe shorter and more often throughout the week and then intersperse some like Christmassy videos. People had requested a non-bookish Christmas gift guide, which is gonna go out, I think like the first week of December. I hope that's not too late for people who do Christmas shopping. I've already done all my Christmas shopping, but I'm also a loser. So I know a lot of people don't even think about Christmas shopping till like midway through December. So I've got a bookish and a non-bookish gift guide that are in the process. Um, and yeah, I'm just gonna do like a couple of other sit down Christmassy videos, but probably just like vlog the month, vlog what we end up doing in Amsterdam and then partly in England. It's harder to vlog when I go back home, obviously I'm at my like family house, but luckily the rest of my family are workaholics, so there's often not anyone home. <laughs> but this morning I'm just listening to New Adele, classic and reading so i'm about 100 pages into my body keeps your secrets dispatches on shame and reclamation and it's really good it's not really what i expected so um i don't know what i did expect to be honest but it um lucia goes to meet i think over like 100 different women and non-binary people to talk to their experiences of shame um so shame is the central theme that runs through this book and she focuses on um gabor mate's idea of like um shame and your body holding on to trauma like um Bessel van I must forget his surname the body keeps your score guy um but yeah she touches on a lot of big theorists in like the mind body connection space which I think is really interesting um and draws on some like new research about how ongoing chronic stress and trauma or even small instances of trauma that build up over time um, can somehow be responsible for failing immunity and autoimmune diseases, which is super interesting as someone who's like lived through some trauma and also lives with autoimmune conditions. Um, I find that area of research super interesting and I'm definitely like on board with the mind-body connection, like I do believe. Those two things can't be distinguished um, in terms of like uh our physical or like our entire well-being and there is not really a divide between mental and physical ill health but it is a series of interviews with different women as i just finished the chapter actually on talking to non-binary people about shame in regard to gender identity which was super um enlightening and she talks to people of all different ages like from 13 to like mid 30s so far and it's harrowing some of it a lot big trigger warnings for like disordered eating eating disorders um sexual abuse um lucia herself was a like semi-professional gymnast growing up and talks about her experiences with a gymnastics coach abusing her which is obviously harrowing and speaks to you know it's just another story in the mass um like the the series of high profile and low profile sports coaches whether that's football or gymnastics or whatever that are um turning out to be abusers so that is another reckoning i think in the me too era but i'm enjoying it so far it's it's like more um it's like it is personal and and the writing is quite floral um quite colloquial which i think that's the bit i was surprised about um i wouldn't say i'm like i love the writing style i find some of it a bit um too like too much um a lot of repetition of phrases and stuff but i think maybe i'm just like jaded by the number of books i've read that like um use those in their writing but um it's saying some really brilliant things and i think a lot of people would get a lot of, of about this if you're interested in trauma um yeah mind body and just like a conversation around uh, me too and violence against women so I'm having a good time reading that. I haven't read any more. In my last vlog, I was reading The Right to Sex. Um, and I haven't actually read any more essays. And I like put it to a side when I went to England. And I haven't picked it back up yet. But I'm hoping to finish both of these by the end of um, Nonfiction November. And there's also a graphic memoir that I've got my eye on that I put in my um, TBR for this month that I would also love to read. But we see where the week takes us. I just got another 
exciting commission so that will take up more of my time basically at the time when I'm not studying I'm either reading or writing so depending on how much writing writing work I have it depends on how much I read so I'm gonna get on with um editing and then I will catch up with you later when we run some errands we're going outside Woo! just gonna get a bit of coffee because I'm, I mean decaf but I'm tired and I need to get a couple of things at the shop my my jumper is from the IJ, it's vintage dyed like Irish wool. I'm obsessed with the colour. This puffer is also from the IJ uh, that I got, you saw the other day. I love it. I love how cropped it is. It's so cute. And then I'm wearing. Then I have on my and other stories woolen trousers because they're comfy. My back in stock clogs. And then. These gloves I bought like two years ago at a car boot sale from an old Scottish man. He was like, I've had these for 30 years. But they're so warm and I'm a mitten stan. Mittens for life. It's like maybe four degrees right now. So I should probably wear a real coat, but the outfit won't look as cute. So I'm just going to wear mittens instead. See you for coffee. We need a piece of that pie. Tell everyone what you want to play. Um, I'm going to play Zelda and Mario and Pokemon because I'm a child. And I'm going to get Animal Crossing. We just got one to share because we thought we don't want to feed the addiction. Yeah, plus it's actually, it makes more, like, if you buy two of the light ones, that would be like £400. Yeah. So we went for one of the originals and... I'm gonna get Animal Crossing and then play Mario Kart together. Woo! Reading who? Hey friends, just coming back to sign off the vlog. Tom's dancing with an apple. Um, just really struggling to get through the weeks at the moment. Does anyone else feel like just like waiting for Christmas? Although I don't know what's going to change at Christmas because I have essays to write and like work to do. But um, I haven't really read much more to be honest. I'm still like 100 pages into that. I actually started Lily King's short story collection last night just because I was like, just not in the mind for um, non-fiction. I feel like I do this every non-fiction November because this is probably like my fourth year doing it. Like I re read non-fiction November before I made book content sort of just because I like followed other people. And I always burn myself out on non-fiction because the non-fiction I like to read is like quite heavy or dealing with issues that are, um, you know, like emotionally expensive for me to read about. Um, and yeah, I just feel like I've done that again, to be honest. So I picked up, yeah, the Lily King short story collection. And I also returned to um, Kia Brown's The Pretty One essay collections, which are on disability, but some of them are like quite humorous. And I've been listening to that while playing Animal Crossing, which has also been taking over my life because I've been playing Animal Crossing on our new Switch with my friend Siska and Lavelle. Um, the bell is in Singapore and Siska is back in London and yeah it's just so fun to play with it and we're crossing with internet friends um I need to hook up with CJ on there soon but yeah that is what I've been doing it's the weekend I'm gonna have the weekend completely off I'm gonna do nothing and like I actually mean nothing I was going to talk about this but even when I say I'm gonna have a restful weekend I end up like making a list of chores I want to do or some like a cafe in the city I want to visit or um things I want to get prepared for the next week but like I actually want a weekend two whole days of doing nothing like whereas I just read 
play Animal Crossing, play Mario Kart, get takeaways, like, you know, like proper checking out of life for the weekend because I just feel like right now my cup is so like on the brink of spilling over and me becoming really ill that I need to just like take it down a few notches and give myself some breathing space so I'm not gonna vlog this weekend or anything that's why I'm signing off the vlog now and then it, we will get started next week for vlogmas baby um vlogmas. Tom's excited although I don't really know what I'm gonna do I planned like four Christmassy sit down videos and then to be honest, the vlogs will probably just remain the same, but I might just put them up like more frequently so you get like three days instead of a week's worth and they're just like shorter and more often. Tell me what your thoughts are on bookish vlogmas. Um, because honestly, reading is slowing down because writing is ramping up. I got two commissions yesterday, which is great, amazing. And my first commission where like an editor reached out to me to write something, which is really cool. But that means I've now got like um, writing at least one thing to write every week until Christmas, not including my like personal, that's like work writing, not including like book writing or like literary magazine submission writing and stuff. So yeah, life is busy and that is okay. Gonna catch you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all soon. Mwah. Bye.